YouTube buddies, I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome to another installment of my Celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney animated their live action under the main Disney banner also crossing another movie off on my 100 movies bucket list series and this week on Celebrating Disney I'm reviewing the first ever film from a groundbreaking animation studio Pixar who helped revolutionize and advancing the art of computer animation with their 1995 masterpiece, Toy Story. So Toy Story was released in 1995. Like I said, it was the first animated film released by Pixar. And obviously the Pixar films, all of them were distributed by Disney. You see the Disney logo on all their films. Disney eventually bought Pixar, so it makes sense to review all the Pixar films on celebrating Disney as well. The film was directed by John Lasseter, who was a prominent figure of Pixar for the longest time. And he directed a lot of the classic Pixar films, the first Toy Story in particular. This is a movie that pretty much changed the game moving forward in animation. People were blown away by the revolutionary computer technologies used to create a photorealistic world and it helped reinvent the animation wheel forever. Uh, CGI animation is now the dominant norm in modern animation and you, I guess you gotta thank Pixar for that. I do miss 2D animation though, they're still beauty to be had in the classic hand-drawn art style of animation but when you don't abuse the CGI technology and you still create remarkable works like what Pixar does what DreamWorks does in most of their films or what Sony's done recently within the Spider-Verse then yeah CG animation is a great tool as well so let's talk about Toy Story and why it's an excellent film Led by Woody, Andy's toys live happily in his room until Andy's birthday brings Buzz Lightyear onto the scene. Afraid of losing his place in Andy's heart, Woody plots against Buzz. But when circumstances separate Buzz and Woody from their owner, the two eventually learn to put aside their differences. And this movie has a pretty awesome voice cast in it, including Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Don Rickles, Jim Varney, Wallace Shawn, John Ratzenberger, Annie Potts, Lori Metcalf, and Arlie Ernie. So the production on Toy Story was actually pretty intense. Nobody had made a full-blown CG animated film up to this scale. CGI was slowly starting to get experimented on. Uh, Pixar made some pretty good shorts before Toy Story, like Tin Toy and Nick Knack, Luxo Jr. Red's Dream, solid shorts they made. Uh, CGI was slowly being implemented in some of Disney's animated features to help enhance the quality of some of the animated films with shots and camera angles that wouldn't have been possible before, like in the ballroom scene in Beauty and the Beast or the Wildebeest sequence in The Lion King. There's even studios that were even starting to use CG animation to make a pretty low budget Christian series of their own. I'm doing that VeggieTales series on my channel as well. Big Idea was already ahead of the game and making an entertaining kids show, 30 minute kids show with talking CGI vegetables that was starting to come along. So Pixar ended up changing the game by making the first fully CGI animated film. It took a long while to get there. There was a lot of pressure the Pixar executives had and the animators in getting this film right. They clashed with Jeffrey Katzenberg over the tone of the film. Katzenberg wanted the more edgier film. They tried that. The original reel was a disaster. If you look up the Black Friday reel of Toy Story, it is abysmal. Woody is an unlikable jerk. You would not want to enjoy his character in any way. He's kind of a sadist and a serial killer. And don't watch it. If that was the final film, Pixar would not be here today. So thankfully, John Lasseter stuck to his guns and made the movie he wanted to make where 
the toys are likable. Even Woody, who is very jealous, you see where he's coming from, and you know he still has that heart of gold because he cares about Andy and everything like that. So, thankfully, the movie we got is actually a masterpiece. Toy Story is a masterpiece, and it still holds up. 25 years later, man, do I feel old. I was actually born the year this movie came out, and I feel so old. Toy Story is an incredible achievement. Let's talk about the CGI first, because even though the animation can be slightly dated, this movie still looks beautiful, especially in the world that it sets up. Uh, I love the photorealism of the textures and the backgrounds, and then, of course, Making your first CGI animated film centered around plastic toys actually helps make the characters feel more lifelike. And it's impressive that the characters still look remarkably well and beautifully realized. And the shining testament of this movie is all the movies Pixar has put out since then have continued to improve in what the original Toy Story set up as far as technology goes. And it's even more impressive seeing what these animators can do with these characters the more the technology continues to grow. And that's why I've been blown away by all the Toy Story sequels to see how far the technology has come. So Toy Story can look a bit dated. Some of the human designs look a bit creepy and uncanny today because they weren't good at doing human characters just yet. Which is probably why you don't see him that much. That's probably a smart move on Pixar's part. At least the humans look better than that nightmarish baby in the tin toy short. Oh, that's the stuff of nightmares. No! And then the, the dog, there's a dog character that doesn't really look fully right either, but obviously Pixar's gone a long way since the first Toy Story and they can pretty much animate anything now and it will look super believable. Sometimes you will even forget it's CG animated. You'll think it's a real creature at times. So they've come a long way. They really have come a long way. I can see people first seeing this film in theaters and be just sheer blown away because they hadn't seen anything like Toy Story. I think Toy Story had that shock and amazement on people, much like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves did back to audiences back in 1937, because audiences hadn't seen a full-length animated film like Snow White before, and they were blown away by it. Now, years later, with Toy Story, you have audiences being blown away by seeing new technology come to life, and it paid off, and it still withstood the test of time 25 years later. The guys behind Pixar, John Lasseter especially, who wrote and directed this film, he knew how to tell a compelling story. Uh, the movie does a pretty good buddy comedy angle with Woody and Buzz, Woody being the favorite toy of Andy, Buzz Lightyear showing up, Space Ranger toy, obviously space is kind of cooler than cowboy, so you can see Andy enjoying Buzz Lightyear a little more, Woody being jealous, they end up they end up outside of Andy's room after a lot of mishaps and they learn to overcome their differences and pretty much accept one another as good friends. And that catalyst of their friendship actually helps build the themes of the franchise up and I enjoy seeing that bond start to develop and grow in the first movie and it makes the franchise go full circle many many years later even up to Toy Story 4. So, you gotta give so much credit to the first Toy Story for setting everything up and still making everything come full circle even 25 years later. That's what I love about Pixar, is their brain trusts are very smart. What I love about the writing in this movie is the toys could have easily been so childish because, you know, they're toys, they're the playthings of children, but I love how the toys are written as adults. The toys know that you know they have a responsibility to make to make their child happy. They even have staff meetings to make sure everything's going right. They know not to move around and interact with their humans. They only interact when the humans are out of the room. It's just a brilliant setup and a brilliant premise that pays off immensely throughout the entire franchise. 
I love the characters in Toy Story so much. Woody and Buzz obviously stand out. Characters played brilliantly both by Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. I can't picture anybody else voicing these characters. It's crazy. At one point, like Paul Newman almost was Woody and like Jim Carrey was almost Buzz. You can't really picture those actors as Woody or Buzz. Pixar does a great job of picking the right actor with these characters and they blend into their roles and you don't really see the actors, you just see the characters. And that's what's great about the voice talents in these Pixar films. Sometimes if you get a celebrity voice, it can be a distraction sometimes. You can see that in like some of these DreamWorks films or Sony films or whatever, but Pixar knows when to pick the right actors and have them blend into their roles, and that's what's great about Toy Story. This movie has an incredible score as well from Randy Newman, who kind of became a shining face in the Pixar name. He did an incredible score that's very calming, it's very relaxing. It definitely has those emotional moments as well. He definitely wrote some incredible songs for this movie as well. Most notably, You've Got a Friend in Me, which is one of the most heartwarming songs I've ever heard. It's an incredible song. It's so catchy, but it has a great message to it about friendship. It's definitely a great song. It's one of the staples in the Pixar library. And even in the first Pixar movie, Pixar being known for their heart and their emotion, it's still felt even in that first Pixar movie. When you get to the part as the movie established that Buzz Lightyear never realized he was a toy, he thought he was the real Buzz Lightyear space ranger compared to everybody else who knew they were toys. When we get to the part where Buzz realizes that he's a toy, it still punches you in the gut. Even though we all knew Buzz was a toy, seeing Buzz react to him knowing he's a toy and him kind of being in an existential crisis afterward. It does hit hard because you feel for him. You want him to overcome this depression spell that he has and to realize that he can be a good toy because he has a good owner that would love and take care of him compared to the Sid character who's kind of a sadist in the toy world, which is kind of funny because I know there were kids that were like Sid, but they never saw themselves as sadists or anything. I just enjoy being creative with their toys, but to most toys that's a sadistic thing to do, creating those mutant toys. But back to Buzz, we, you want him to overcome this depression spell and realize that Andy was a good owner all along. He does, he has great care and respect for his toys and he doesn't play with Buzz because Buzz is the real space ranger. He just loves that Buzz is his toy. So, it all comes full circle in the end. I love the payoff of Woody and Buzz's friendship. It all leads up to an incredible sequence, a chase sequence where Woody and Buzz have to catch up to the moving van. Andy and his mom move. Obviously that's part of the plot of the film. So they have to catch up to the moving van and catch up with these toys. It is a phenomenal sequence where Woody and Buzz are flying because they had a rocket and you get that epic payoff moment. This isn't flying, this is falling with style. Woody made fun of Buzz earlier because Buzz thought he could fly. He kind of improvised by sheer luck and Woody said it was falling with style. And I love how it became a full circle moment at the end of the movie where Buzz actually could fly because he was strapped to a rocket. They were able to fly back to Andy's car. It's just a great moment and just an amazing payoff between seeing these characters actually come together. You got the amazing Randy Newman score there. It's just one of my favorite moments in the movie. And the animation still holds up remarkably well in some of these sequences. That I love the opening moment with the army men coming down, kind of doing their reconnaissance mission to spy on Andy's birthday party as a lot of the toys are, are so scared that they're going to be replaced. <laughs> it's such a great moment of the movie too. I just love this movie. Yeah, I guess you can pick fun, poke fun that the animation is slightly dated. You could just see some of the cracks being the first CG animated film, but I honestly don't mind that the 
humans can look slightly creepy. The, the dog doesn't really look fully right. But the movie is still a technical marvel. Even in Pixar's first animated film, the CGI still looks very stunning to me, especially with how they handle the toy character, especially with how lifelike they look. I think this is an excellent film. I love the buddy adventure between Woody and Buzz. I just think the comedy really lands. I think the emotions are there. And thank God this movie was a success because we wouldn't have the great studio known as Pixar making quality film after quality film and helping enhance the Disney brand along with it with their films. So Toy Story is an incredible marvel. One of the best animated films of all time. One of the standouts in CG animation for sure. And it's still one of my absolute favorite Pixar films. So what am I going to rate Toy Story? Well, you probably know the drill because I love this film so much. I'm going to rate Toy Story a 5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 100 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Toy Story. It's part of my Celebrating Disney series and on the 100 Movies Bucket List series. It's, I'm glad that it's awesome that some Disney and Pixar films are part of the 100 Movies Bucket List series. Toy Story is an incredible film and I'm glad that a Pixar film is part of the 100 Movies Bucket List. I will leave a link in the description below for the playlist where you can catch up on some of these other reviews if you're a fan of cinema and want to see a wide variety represented on such a unique poster so be on the lookout for more videos and if you'd like to catch up don't forget to click the link in the description below to see more also being a disney fan you probably know that this is part of my celebrating disney series where each week i review and celebrate all things disney regardless of quality animated or live action under the main disney banner I hope you enjoyed this video and like with the 100 movies bucket list I will leave a link in the description below for my celebrating Disney playlist where you can catch up on all the reviews I've done in this series so far what are my animated reviews my live action reviews if you're a big fan of Disney like I am there's definitely a lot of reviews to enjoy so click the link in the description below for see to, to see more and if you enjoy both series, don't forget to click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell to be notified of future videos in both series. If you're new to celebrating Disney, each week I alternate between animated reviews and live action reviews. My animated reviews are done in chronological release order, not only with the Pixar films, but alongside the theatrical Disney animated classics along with their direct-to-video sequels. My live action reviews are freestyle, there's no particular order and they're prone to request. If there's any live action films or franchises you'd like me to tackle in the near future, don't be shy to leave your request down in the comments below. I'll definitely take your comments under consideration and I'll figure out when to integrate them in future installments in my Celebrating Disney series. Join me next week on Celebrating Disney and my next live action review. This is one that I've heard great things about for many, many years. People tell me I need to watch this film. I've seen other YouTubers rave about how incredible this movie is. I'm looking at you, Chris from Film Stock. Next week, I am going to be watching Remember the Titans, one of the most acclaimed sports movies Disney has ever made. I've heard nothing but incredible things about this film. I can't wait to check it out. So next week, I'll be tackling Remember the Titans. Be on the lookout for that video coming next week. I can't wait to check that film out for myself. But if you've seen Toy Story, let me know down in the comments below. Would you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!